Lesson 2b, the cytoplasm. The cytoplasm consists of all the material between the cell membrane and the cell nucleus. The components of the cytoplasm have three roles, structural, energy, and protein synthesis roles. The structural components begin with the cytosol, also known as the hyaloplasm. In this image, it's represented by the gray space in the cell. It consists of the fluid within a cell and all of the dissolved particles in it, such as amino acids, monosaccharides, free nucleotides, and ions. It provides the optimal environment for metabolic reactions, consisting of ideal temperature, pH, and salinity. The cytosol suspends all the other organelles in a perfect watery bath for all of the necessary chemical reactions for proper cell function. Another integral component to the cell structure is the cytoskeleton, a fine network of protein fibers that acts as scaffolding for the cell. In this image, the round blue circles are the nuclei of the cell, surrounded by the red cell membranes. The green stains the cytoskeleton, a near invisible system of protein fibers that support the cell's shape and, in some cases, assist in the cell's ability to move. As we zoom in, the protein fibers are seen much clearer. The protein that makes up the cytoskeleton can be either thin lines of protein called microfilaments or a tube created by winding of protein called microtubules. Another protein based organelle is the centriole. These log shaped structures are often found in pairs in the cell and have a role in cell division. You may recall from grade 8 science talking about spindle fibers originating from the centrioles once they have migrated to the opposite poles during a metaphase. Then during anaphase, these fibers will shorten, pulling the sister chromatids apart. The organelle associated with energy is the mitochondria. It's a double membrane organelle in the shape of a jelly bean and is a site of ATP production in the cell. The process is called cellular respiration. Cellular respiration begins in the cytoplasm, where glucose is broken into pyruvic acid through a process called glycolysis. The pyruvic acid then enters the mitochondria and is further broken down in the liquid portion of the mitochondria called the matrix in blue. This chemical reaction creates 4 ATP, CO2, water, and a whole bunch of electron carriers called NADH. This reaction in the matrix is called the TCA cycle, the citric acid cycle, or the Krebs cycle. The final stage, which makes more ATP, occurs at the folded inner membrane called the cristae where a series of chemical reactions involving NADH, collectively called the electron transfer chain, occurs, resulting in 34 more ATP for a grand total of 36 ATP for each molecule of glucose consumed in a reaction. The protein synthesis organelles begin with the ribosome. This protein-based organelle is responsible for reading RNA and placing amino acids together in the necessary order to make a viable protein, a process called translation. They're often seen as small round structures found freely floating in the cytoplasm. These free ribosomes, as they're called, will manufacture protein that are to stay within the cell. We will also see them bound to another membranous organelle called the endoplasmic reticulum, giving it a rough or sandpaper appearance, hence its name. Here you can see the rough nature of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Protein produced at the rough ER will be deposited into the middle space of the endoplasmic reticulum, called the lumen or cistern and will be transported out of the cell. The endoplasmic reticulum that lacks ribosomes appears smooth under the microscope and is named such. The smooth ER is the site of lipid production and cells responsible for producing lipids, steroids and hormones will have an abundance of smooth endoplasmic reticulum, also known as SER. SER is also the site of detoxification of poisons such as alcohol and will be found in abundance in organs such as the liver which deals with toxins. Another membrane organelle, integral for synthesis and delivery of proteins, is the Golgi body or Golgi apparatus. This organelle will accept membrane packages that butt off the endoplasmic reticulum and fuse with the cis side of the Golgi body. As the protein travels from the cis end to the trans end, it will be modified in its shape and size, becoming activated and ready to perform once it reaches the trans side. Once on the trans side, a secretory vesicle will be formed where its contents will be either immediately released out of the cell in a process called exocytosis or remain in the cytoplasm and be exocytized later, like neurotransmitters. It may also become an inactive product called an endosome or may contain hydrolytic enzymes called a lysosome, which will help digest nutrients brought into the cell through a process called endocytosis. This leads us to our final organelle to speak of, which is the membrane-bound vesicles. These can be purely used for storage, as we see in plants with their large central water vacuole, 
They may also hold digestive enzymes that will fuse with other nutrient-containing vesicles to help break down nutrients, or they may hold chemicals to be used later, such as neurotransmitters.